I'm General Don, John Daniel Imboden. I'm from Staunton, Virginia, and I'm at Gettysburg. I'm out by Lee's headquarters. I have 2100 Cavalry, the 18th Virginia, and the 62nd Partisan Rangers, and 6th Cannon, McClanahan's Battery, and I'm told to guard the wagon train. And it's unclear whether Lee forgot I was out there, but I was never called up into battle at Gettysburg. But after the battle was over, Lee gave me the command of taking all the wounded back to Virginia, 18 miles of wagons of wounded. It took more than 24 hours for him to pass any one section. I made it to Williamsport. Halfway through, General Custer's men break into the wagon train at Monterey Pass and push two wagons over a cliff. I ride back and run point blank into Custer, where I pull this very pistol out and fire both barrels at General Custer, but right in my diary that with three days of rain, the powder was wet. We get to Williamsport, Virginia, and the river is swollen. I had to form what they call the Wagoneers fight, where the Wagoneers who drove the wagons had to be armed and hold off the Union Army. So I basically got most of the wounded back to Virginia alive. And Major General Jubal Anderson Early from Franklin County, Virginia, and uh, division commander at this time at the, uh, in the 2nd Corps, Army of Northern Virginia, under the command of uh, uh, General Ewell. Um, formerly division commander was uh, General Jackson, who had just demised at the Battle of Chancellorsville. On our, our travels to Gettysburg during the campaign, my orders were to stay on the Confederate Army right and to capture the town of York, Pennsylvania, which our division did quite successfully, with further orders be given to capture the bridge crossing the Susquehanna to keep it from being burned so we could cut, go into Pennsylvania, which were our orders, and capture the uh, capital of Pennsylvania, uh, Harrisburg. Uh, I sent General Gordon that afternoon after our entering into uh, York, Pennsylvania, to go to uh, Wrightsville to keep the bridge from being burned. Uh, the Federals had other ideas and burnt the bridge as a battle pursued there. That afternoon, General Ewell and I had discussed uh, our uh, encounters and where we were going to have dinner the next day, and we decided that we shall dine in the Capitol at uh, Harrisburg the next night. Uh, those uh, uh, aspirations were denied us when uh, General Lee gave us orders to report to uh, an area outside of Gettysburg called Cashtown the next day. As we withdrew from York, I met up with General Ewell again in a little area called Hydersburg and camped the night there. Uh, we got orders from General Lee to report in and around Cashtown and Gettysburg, and or Gettysburg in that particular area to, uh, to bring the Army together. That evening at uh, in camp, we got a, a word from General Hill stating that he was going to uh, take a, uh, uh, two brigades, or two divisions actually, into Gettysburg to, on a connaissance uh, on the... Uh, uh, feeling that there was federal troops in Gettysburg. So the next morning on July 1st, when we rose early and decided our, our point of attack or our point of travel would be, I was going to come down with my division on the old Harrisburg-Gettysburg Road. And as we approached the area, if seem, seemingly if our orders were to follow, I was going to swing to the west and meet General Yule and General Lee at Cashtown. On our, on our uh, way to Gettysburg, we heard the sound of the guns, and as being a soldier as we were, we went to the sound of the guns and saw the situation as it was at the battle. Uh, I noticed that the uh, Federals were uh, entrenched, or in, not entrenched, but positioned on a, ta a tall knoll across a little creek we were later found out was called Rock Creek. And um, their flank was basically in the air and their, their flank was exposed and they did not see us approach. So I gave orders to our artillery commander named jo uh, Colonel by the name of Jones to send two batteries out to the far east on a little knoll and fire upon their flank and gave orders to General Gordon to take his brigade quietly, sneak in across the field and down through that creek and attack the Federal flank at that time. They did that with such a veracity that they pushed the Federals hard and they retreated into the town of Gettysburg. I took the rest of my division and came in and followed those Federals into, into the town, capturing about 5,000 prisoners, uh, a numerous amounts of artillery and, and uh, muskets uh, setting them up in the, in the town and followed the uh, federal troops as they retreated up to a big tall knoll we later found out was called Cemetery Hill and to the, to the east of that, southeast of that was another knoll called Culp's Hill. 
it was desired at that time that we should take that high ground, but uh, uh, we would have no more troops to, uh, to uh, engage in that day. And um, as I was trying to find uh, formidable troops from uh, the, the Third Corps that were available for us, I was told that there were no more troops available to, uh, to take that hill, and that I was reminded at that time by General Yule that we have no orders yet, and General Lee has not given us command or given us orders to uh, bring on a general engagement. And that General Johnson was troops were coming up later that evening, and perhaps his troops would be fresh, and they could uh, assist us in taking taking those rocky taking those hills east of town. Uh, as the night went on, uh, General Johnson's men came up. Uh, we um, had a discussion between the division commanders, myself, General Yule, and General Johnson. And as we retired that evening. Um, we assumed that General Johnson's men would be in town in time enough to capture the, uh, the, the, the hill called Culp's Hill. But as we rose the next morning on July 2nd, we realized that his troops had just gotten up and the hill was not taken. Uh, at that time, General Ewell was rather upset with General Johnson. I was myself as well. But as, the, as you well know, uh, we attacked later that day with uh, not quite the success that we desired the day before. Good morning, all. I am General Robert E. Lee, the Commanding General of the Army of Northern Virginia. Uh, we arrived at Gettysburg as an altercation had happened between local militia and one of my units, which evolved into a major battle. And it seemed like it was almost like a fire. You dumped more water on it, but it seemed like it kept growing, and even that we did not want to fight there. The original plan was to go to Harrisburg and to uh, attack there. But as circumstances happened, we were involved with the Federal Cavalry and then Federal Infantry and then the whole Federal Corps. The uh, battle proceeded. I do not understand why the attacks were not better coordinated. But things happen sometimes and you have to make adjustments. And our adjustments were not quite what they should have been. But uh, we, per we attacked on the first day up at Culp's Hill, and uh, there is a myriad of reasons why that did not work. Um, second day, we attacked at the little round top hills because we found out there was nobody there, and we tried to attack there, and they suddenly got up infantry and they beat back uh, General Hood and General McLaws and General Anderson's people from Arizona, uh, Alabama and Texas. So uh, on the third day, our original plan was to attack the very center of the Union lines, knowing that we had attacked the left end and the right end. We decided that uh, they would reinforce those areas and that the center should be weak. So what we did was we had the, the demonstration on the left end and the right end on the flanks. and that battle took place, but the follow-up across the middle of the field was delayed for a certain amount of time, and actually by the time we did attack, the Union or the Federal Army had reinforced the center only because they were giving the fellows that was on both ends a chance to rest. And by putting them in the very center of the room, or center of the field, they thought that they were uh, giving them the safest place to take a break. And in fact, that was right where we were attacking. So his reinforcements were there. Uh, what happened at Pickett's Charge, which is a mis misnomer actually, it should have been Longstreet's Charge because it was his core. But General Pickett had his group, his division into it. And we lost many, many of the very best of our soldiers that day. Many of the soldiers that were there had been in the war many, many times. They had fought many different battles. All the shirkers and gold bricks had managed to leave by that time. So we just had the very best that were there, the cream of the crop. And by doing that, we thought we could pull it off. And um, there was another reason I found out years later of what happened that was really an amazing fact. Our powder supplier in Richmond had had an explosion and all our powder was coming from Georgia. The Georgia powder was much more effective and much more volatile than our Richmond powder. So all of our artillery was basically overshooting where we thought we were shooting. 
we were actually shooting over top of the soldier's head, so we weren't doing any damage at all. So when they finally called off the cannonade and Pickett's men and Longstreet's men started across that field, they were, they were basically met by destruction. We lost half, at least, of the, uh, of the division that day. So we uh, basically retreated back to Virginia to regroup and fight another day. We were hoping to make Gettysburg the final day. Uh, I think most of us, myself included, were very tired, very tired of the war. We wanted to end it that day, and, uh, and that didn't happen. We fought for another almost two years. Hello, I'm George G. Meade, overall commander of the Army of the Potomac. We just got done a terrific battle out of Gettysburg. Three days of hard fighting. Our boys managed to rout General Lee and send him back to Virginia. Though Abraham Lincoln didn't think I hit him quite hard enough, you got to take into consideration my army was pretty well shot up. I sent nine brigades of cavalry and two corps of infantry after Lee. I don't know what more President Lincoln wanted me to do because I had my dead and I had my wounded to take care of. I lost a lot of officers, high officers, junior grade officers. I didn't know how much of the army I had left. But once we get assembled, I'm sure we will meet Robert E. Lee again. And hopefully this time we can end the war. My name is Elizabeth Howard. My family owns a livery station in Baltimore, Maryland and so we have access to horses and carriages. I heard about the terrible, terrible battle from Gettysburg, and so I wanted to come up and see if I could help with the wounded. Now, my family has relatives who went to South and the North, and so it doesn't matter to me what side the boys fought on. If I can be of some help, I will. So I brought my livery up, and I'm here in the city trying to help. It's a terrible, terrible scene. There are dead horses everywhere. The smells are just horrible. The boys are in hospitals, makeshift hospitals in all the buildings. And there are a lot of us civilian ladies trying to help. We do the best we can, but it's a sad, sad war. And I hope that soon it will be over. What a terrible day, what a terrible three days this has been. Thank you. Then adieu, then adieu is the last 
last bugle strain that is falling on the air. Should it be so decreed that we'll ne'er meet again, or remember the young volunteer? I'm a young volunteer, and my heart is true to our flag that moves the wind. And three cheers for that flag and our bugle strain that is falling on the air. Should it be so decreed that we'll ne'er meet again, or remember the young volunteer? Should it be so decreed that we'll ne'er meet again, or remember the young Some loved one was saying, I wish he were here To feel that the group at the fireside Were thinking of me as I roam Oh yes, it would be joy beyond measure To know that they missed me at home To know that they missed me at home When twilight approaches the season that ever is sacred to song does someone repeat my name over and sigh that I tarry so long and is there a chord in the music that's missed when my voice is away and a chord in each heart that awaketh Regret at my wearisome stay, regret at my wearisome stay. Do they set me a chair near the table when evening's home pleasures are night? When the candles are lit in the parlor and the stars in the calm azure sky? And when the good nights are repeated And all lay them down to their sleep Do they think of the absent and waft me A whispered good night while they weep A whispered good night while they weep Do they miss me at home? Do they miss me at morning, at noon, or at night? And lingers one gloomy shade round them That only my presence can light Are joys less invitingly welcome And pleasures less hail than before Because one is missed from the circle Because I am with them no more Because I am with them no more. For photos, go to frederick.com keyword civil war. <laughs>